Hello and welcome everyone. Pulpitis is a state of the pulp in which the pulp undergoes inflammation. There are two basic types of pulpitis that are mentioned in most of the literature. These are the reversible pulpitis and the irreversible pulpitis and I shall be comparing them side by side. Reversible pulpitis is the acute condition of the pulp, meaning that as soon as the pulp gets inflamed, the first stage it goes through will be the reversible pulpitis stage. Pulp essentially goes into an inflammatory mode usually within days of the irritation. Sometimes the pulp does not go into inflammation, but usually it does. On the other hand, irreversible pulpitis is a chronic condition of the pulp and is mostly a sequel to reversible pulpitis, meaning that if a tooth suffering from reversible pulpitis remains unresolved, it may go into the next phase and become irreversibly inflamed, hence the name irreversible pulpitis. Since irreversible pulpitis is a chronic condition, it usually takes weeks or it may even take months for the irreversible pulpitis to develop. Causes of irreversible pulpitis include minor irritation to the pulp, such as caries in the pits and fissure, small carious lesions that aren't progressing for a very long time. Caries is indeed the most common cause of reversible pulpitis. Reversible pulpitis can also be elected by operative procedures such as deep curettage or simple cavity preparations. And finally, the pulp of the tooth can also get inflamed due to tooth fractures which are confined to enamel and don't propagate to dentine. Causes of irreversible pulpitis are just a more exaggerated form of those of the reversible pulpitis. Like if the caries progresses deep enough, it will cause the pulp to get irreversibly inflamed. Or if the trauma is deep enough or the dentine has been exposed for a very long time, then the pulp can get irreversibly inflamed. When it comes to diagnosis, reversible pulpitis is mostly symptomless, but if the symptoms do occur, they follow a particular pattern. Application of hot and cold stimuli causes sharp transient pain on a tooth suffering from reversible pulpitis. So much so that it is unbearable for the patient while removing the stimulus relieves the pain immediately. The irreversible pulpitis can either be symptomless or it can also have clinical signs and symptoms. When with symptoms, the patient usually presents with a spontaneous lingering pain. That means the pain will elect without any external stimuli. So a patient having a tooth with irreversible pulpitis will complain of a spontaneous pain not caused by anything and that pain will last a good couple of minutes or even a few hours before dying off and this is known as the lingering nature of pain. Now this will happen in an episodic manner from time to time or it may just be continuous in nature. So just to summarize this small story on diagnosis, the pain of reversible pulpitis needs a stimulus to begin. It does not have a spontaneous nature. And the pain of reversible pulpitis dies off as soon as the stimulus is removed, meaning it is non-lingering and non-spontaneous in nature, while that of irreversible pulpitis is spontaneous and lingering in nature. Now that is not to say that every time the concerning tooth will give you signs and symptoms, because sometimes the concerning tooth may not provide any signs and symptoms. So signs and symptoms along with pedipical x-ray and clinical examination are important in confirming any diagnosis. On a peripical x-ray, a small translucency may be appreciated in the place of the carious lesion with a tooth suffering from reversible pulpitis. A peripical x-ray from irreversible pulpitis will show a bigger translucency that is much closer to the pulp. Clinically, a tooth suffering from reversible pulpitis will show a small carious lesion usually in the pits and fissures of the posterior while the lesions of irreversible pulpitis are much larger and extensive. Treatment plan of the reversible pulpitis involves the removal of the stimulus that is causing the reversible pulpitis. Like if the pulpitis is caused by a small lesion of caries, so removal of the caries and appropriately filling of the tooth by proper insulating material on the dentine so that sensitivity can be controlled will be the best suited treatment. And therefore, there is no need for an extensive endodontic procedure such as root canal treatment in the case of reversible pulpitis. Only removal of the stimulus that is causing the pulpitis and filling the tooth appropriately are more than enough to subside the reversible pulpitis. Hence, it is known as reversible because the condition of the tooth is reversed back to normal once the stimulus is removed. 
But if the irritation to the pulp is left unchecked, then the pulp can easily progress towards moderate to severe inflammation causing irreversible pulpitis. Once the tooth is in this irreversible pulpitis state, removing the cause of inflammation such as removing caries lesion will never be enough as the pulp will eventually progress to pulpal death regardless of that. The only possible treatment is a root canal or extraction of the tooth with irreversible pulpitis. Simply removing the carious lesion or the cause of inflammation is not enough in order to save the tooth. There needs to be a definitive treatment for pulp removal. So root canal treatment or in worst cases extraction of a tooth is the treatment for irreversible pulpitis in order to get rid of the symptoms and pain. Now let's look into a clinical question to spot the difference between the two. A 19 year old female patient came into uropity with pain in her 3-6. 3-6 in FDI means that it is a mandibular left first molar. The patient is complaining of suffering from pain while eating and is seeking treatment for that. Upon further questioning the patient, you find out that the pain has been going on for about a week or so. The pain only happens when the patient eats something, otherwise she wasn't aware of the pain. After doing a peripical x-ray, you find out that there is a translucency on the mesial side of the tooth, which seems to be near the dentino enamel junction. Upon clinical examination, you happen to see that there is a blackish lesion on the mesial side of the 3-6. Given the information, what will be your most possible diagnosis? A. Vertical tooth fracture B. Reversible pulpitis C. Irreversible pulpitis or D. Gingivitis So you have 5 seconds to read the question once again and then I will explain you the answer. So we can all agree that gingivitis is the most obvious wrong answer since the symptoms presented to us are not even close to a case presenting with gingivitis. So let's just first cancel that out. Now patient with vertical tooth fracture also complains of pain while biting or chewing. In fact pain while biting is a classical sign of a tooth fracture. But in this case we are also given a radiographic appearance of translucency on the mesial side and also a clinical feature of a blackish appearance on the tooth which almost confirms a caries lesion, so tooth fracture is least likely. It is not to say that a tooth with vertical tooth fracture cannot have a caries lesion, it is just that with the history provided in the question and the options given to us, we can safely say that vertical tooth fracture is the least likely among all other options. And a tooth with fracture also has other clinical features like appearance of a crack, trans illumination test and so on. More on vertical tooth fracture in another video. Now if you are paying attention to the video then you must have reduced that between reversible and irreversible pulpitis the most likely correct answer is irreversible pulpitis. The reason is that first of all the pain has been there for only a week or so. Secondly the nature of pain presented to us is not lingering or spontaneous in nature. The patient reports of having a painful episode only while eating or biting something. Lastly, the caries lesion on the radiograph is near the dentino enamel junction, meaning it is still far away from the pulp chamber. So based on the provided evidence, it is safe to say that reversible vulpitis is the correct answer. If you enjoyed my content, you can always get more notes and more MCQs on my Patreon page. The link will be present in the description or you can just type patreon.com slash study with a dentist. As always, take care of yourselves and your loved ones. Stay safe and goodbye.